I am so glad you're here. Today we're going to be talking all about Newman projections, which is a way that we can visualize molecules in three dimensions by looking down a single bond, in this case it would be this bond, in order to visualize where the atoms are in three-dimensional space. In a previous video, which you can view here, we covered how to draw molecules using the bond line structure. In this video, we're going to look at using this powerful tool in order to visualize the spatial arrangement of molecules in three dimensions, and also how to use them to predict the overall stability of a molecule. And stick around to the end because I have some practice problems that should help for your next exam. Now let's say we wanted to draw a Newman projection of this molecule. The first thing that we need to do is identify our reference point, specifically which bond are we going to be looking down. And for this case, what we can do is draw what is effectively an eyeball and showcase that we are looking down the bond that is between this carbon and this carbon. Additionally, what we need to be able to recognize is that even though the wedges are drawn for the bromine atoms, there is a dashed hydrogen back there as well. But remember, typically when we draw organic molecules, we do not showcase the carbon-hydrogen bonds. For the same reason that we know that there are three hydrogens here and three hydrogens here, hopefully you can recognize that since carbon needs to make four bonds, that there's also a hydrogen that lies in the backwards position using this wedge and similarly at this location as well. So there is a hydrogen at both of those positions and the wedge is indicating that the bromines are coming out at the screen at you and the dashes are indicating that they're coming back into the screen. Now since we're looking down this bond, what's going to happen is that the reference point is actually going to turn this molecule so that you're only able to very easily visualize the very front atoms, which in this case is going to be a CH3, a Br, and an H. So if you were to look down this bond, what you would see is is that going downwards is our methyl group, that CH3 that is right here. And remember from this position, the bromine is coming out at the screen, but that means that it's gonna be going to the right-hand direction. So this is coming to the right-hand side, which means that the hydrogen atom must be going to the left-hand side. And this is the front of the molecule. So all we've done is we've taken this and we've turned it facing you where you're looking down this bond. And since you're looking down this bond, that means that invisibly that bond is going into the screen, giving you a clear visual sight of the front of the molecule. Now since we're looking down this bond and what you're seeing is the front of the molecule, then what remains invisible is the back of the molecule. So we'll draw in a circle just to indicate that we're going back into the molecule. And from here, what is going straight up is going to be that other methyl group. So that other methyl group that's in the back here. Additionally, if you were looking down this molecule, to the left hand side would be this hydrogen going down into the left, and going down into the right is going to be this bromine atom. So therefore, we can draw it like this. And this gives us a clear view of what the back of the molecule looks like. So what we can do now is put these two images together, and that's going to give us our Newman structure. So remember, in the back is our CH3, down into the left is our hydrogen, and down into the right is our bromine. And the front of the molecule, we see that coming from the center, we have a hydrogen to the up and to the left, a bromine up and to the right, and a methyl group down into the front. And therefore, this is the Newman projection for this molecule when your reference point is looking down this bond. Importantly, we can use Newman projections to predict the overall stability of a molecule. Remember that molecules typically tend to orient in ways that are lower in energy and thus more stable. Also important to keep in mind is that rotation around sigma bonds is readily accessible and possible for molecules. So you can always rotate around sigma bonds. It's only pi bonds that lock bonds into position where there's no rotation possible. Let's take a look at ethane, for example. So CH3, CH3 is ethane. And these molecules can exist in either of these conformations. Let's take a look at the Newman projection for each. So remember, if we're to take uh, an approach where we're looking down this bond in between the two carbon atoms, then we're going to first draw the front atoms so the front atoms are going to have a hydrogen going up and to the left, and a hydrogen going up and to the right, and a hydrogen coming down. And then the back has the hydrogen going up, and two hydrogens going down and left, and down and right. So this would be the confirmation of a Newman projection for this version of the ethane molecule. We can do the same for the other ethane molecule. So if we take a look down the carbon-carbon bond, looking in this direction, then in this case, what we have is a situation where the hydrogen is coming up, a hydrogen is going down and left, and a hydrogen is going down and right. Notice, though, that the other 
the back side of the molecule has the exact same conformation. So we can draw that by just drawing these bonds going very close to one another, where this hydrogen is also going straight up. We have a hydrogen going down into the left in the back and a hydrogen going down into the right in the back. So therefore, we can draw this as the Newman projection for this version of the ethane molecule. Now, importantly, for these different structures, what you should notice is that the hydrogens are overlapping or not overlapping and thus can come into contact with one another. Remember that even though we're drawing these effectively as a point, what exists in reality is an orbital, which is a density of a location of likelihood of finding electrons. So remember that the electron in an orbital is constantly able to move around and can exist in this electron cloud. So what that means is in this orientation, these electron clouds are further away than they are than in, in this circumstance where these hydrogens are pointing in the same direction. So since these hydrogens are pointing in the same direction, they can come into contact contact with their electron density and remember that electrons repel one another. This causes a strain to the molecule and makes it higher in energy. Whereas this version, which we call staggered, would not introduce as much of that electron-electron repulsion because the electrons are further apart from one another. And for these conformations, we call the one where they're separated a little bit further out from one another staggered. So this is called the staggered Newman projection, whereas this is called the eclipsed eclipsed Newman projection, where effectively, since the atoms are in alignment with one another, we would say that they're eclipsed, just like in the case of a solar eclipse or a lunar eclipse. Now, admittedly, for a molecule like ethane, the hydrogen atoms do not interact with each other very much because they're relatively small. However, if we were to consider butane, then we need to consider all the different orientations and all the different Newman projections that we can draw and what impact that has on the relative energy of those conformations. So on the screen, on the y-axis, I have potential energy. On the x-axis, I have the dihedral angle, which is the angle between the two substituents. In this case, what we were going to be looking down is actually going to be the carbon-carbon bond in the center of the molecule. That means that on each end, we will have a CH3 and another CH3, as opposed to just hydrogens as we looked at for that example using ethane. So in this case, since we have those larger methyl groups, what you should see is that when those methyl groups are directly eclipsed with one another, that is actually the highest energy point because those two very large substituents can come into contact and effectively hit each other. This is what's sometimes known as steric hindrance, where the size of the substituents and their locations may cause them to come into contact. And remember, since those are effectively clouds of electrons, they are actually wanting to repel one another. So because of this, it's going to be the highest energy. And and therefore, what you should notice is that when they're opposite of one another, like at the dihedral angle of 180 degrees, in this case, we have the CH3 and CH3, or the two methyl groups, directly 180 degrees from one another, being the dihedral angle, those are the lowest energy positions. And depending on the orientation or the closeness of those two methyl groups, we get different energy values. And what you should notice is that every time we have a non-eclipsed conformation, in other words, where the dihedral dihedral angle is not an, a value that is going to allow the overlap of different substituents or things coming off of our carbon chain, these are always a little bit lower in energy than when they are eclipsed with one another, regardless of whether or not the substituent is a hydrogen or a methyl group. So as you can see, depending on the orientation of the molecule in three-dimensional space, this is going to give us different energy values. And remember, molecules typically tend to orient in the lowest energy conformation. Now in these Newman projections, we can get three Three different conformations which are actually eclipsed, meaning that the substituents do not overlap with one another along the Newman projection. In the example where the substituent methyl groups were anti to one another, we said that they were 180 degrees from one another. Whereas in the two Gauche conformations, notice that they're on different sides, but they're still 60 degrees from one another. So this dihedral angle is 60 degrees, whereas this dihedral angle was 180 degrees. And remember, we said that the anti conformation is actually the most stable or the most favorable conformation. And remember that each of these substituents can be thought of as large electron clouds. And notice that in this case, both of those large electron clouds are fully separated from one another and they do not repel one another. Notice, however, that in the Gauche conformations, there is some overlap between these substituents where we're going to get electron clouds that are going to repel one another. The same is true for both of these Gauche conformations. And in fact, because they're exactly 60 degrees away from one another in both of these examples, we would say that these are energetically equivalent, or another term for that is called degenerate. Now let's try some practice problems to gauge your understanding. 
pause the video, try these problems independently, and then resume the video to check my explanations. An important skill to develop is going from bond line structures to Newman projections. Also, when you are presented with a Newman structure, you should know what that bond line structure actually looked like. So in this example, I can identify that the front of the molecule, which is the one that is coming out at you, has a methyl group going up and a methyl group going down into the left. That means that this carbon has two methyl groups coming off of it. So we can start at that position by placing a carbon with two methyl groups, but importantly, one of those are going down into the left which in this case we will draw as a wedge. So this would be the CH3, and the CH3 that's going up would be here. Next, you can either draw in the hydrogen or just omit it, because remember, we don't have to draw in carbon to hydrogen bonds when drawing bond line structures. And remember, since this was the front of the molecule, that means that the bond that we're actually looking down goes in this direction, so there must be a carbon-carbon bond here. What I see next is that going down, there's an ethyl group, which is CH2, CH3. Going up and to the right is going to be another ethyl group, which is CH2, CH3, and then that must mean that coming back is our methyl group, which is CH3. Now we can draw the actual bond line structure, which we don't draw in any carbon-hydrogen bonds. Importantly, we also should recognize that since both of these are methyl groups, this is not actually a stereocenter. In order to be a stereocenter, carbon has to be attached to four different groups. Therefore, since both of these are ethyl groups, this is also not a stereocenter. So when we go to draw our bond line structure, we do not actually need to include wedges or dashes at either of those positions. So therefore, our final structure should actually look just like this, where the front of the molecule is a dimethyl group and the back of the molecule is two ethyl groups and a methyl group. Remember, when drawing the Newman projection for this molecule, our vantage point is looking down this carbon-carbon bond. Therefore, literally imagine looking at the molecule turning and looking down at that carbon-carbon bond. Since the chlorine atom is coming out at you, out at you to the screen, if we're looking down this direction, that means it's going up and to the left. Whereas the bromine atom, which is drawn with a dash, would be going back into the screen, that means that it should be going up and to the right. We can begin at the front of the molecule with our methyl group coming down, our chlorine atom going up and to the left, and our bromine atom going up and to the right. The back of the molecule will draw in with our methyl group going up, our chlorine atom should be going down and to the left, and our bromine atom should be going down and to the right. And therefore, this is the Newman projection for this molecule with our vantage point down this carbon-carbon bond. When looking at the relative stability of these different conformations of this molecule with the two bromine substituents, we need to keep in mind that the fact that an eclipsed conformation like these two are never going to be the most energetically favorable. And that's because, in fact, when you have this sort of overlap, like in this case where both of the bromine substituents are in the same position, this is going to cause the most steric strain. So in fact, this is going to be the highest highest energy of all four of these conformations. The next one is also eclipsed, meaning that the substituents lie along the same axes. However, the bromine substituents, which are the larger and most electron dense, are still separated at least a little bit by about 60 degrees. However, because we still do have steric strain between the different substituents here, because they are overlapping one another in this eclipse conformation, this is still pretty energetically unfavorable. So then we need to turn our attention to the examples where we have staggered conformation, meaning that there is a 60 degree angle between the two different substituents. Importantly, however, we learned that this one is called gauche, where the largest substituents are 60 degrees from one another, and this one is called anti, where the largest substituents, in this case the bromine atoms, are 180 degrees from one another. And since these are the furthest apart, these electron clouds do not come into contact and repel one another, so in fact this is going to be the most energetically favorable of all these different conformations. If you enjoyed today's video, make sure to give it a thumbs up, and if you have any questions at all, drop it as a comment down below and I'll be happy to help you out. Make sure to subscribe to my channel for more chemistry content, and if you have any questions about organic chemistry, you can check out this playlist here. I'll see you in the next video.